Hello, happy Friday. In this Friday Functions video, I'm going to show you our new interface for your home and your create screen. And it's a lot of cool stuff to help bring everything together for you, especially when, it, when you think about those of you that may be building both Canvas and model driven apps. So you'll see this also in our most recent blog, and I will show you how you get that from your homepage. Notice the homepage here has at the top, basically the create from blank apps and the start from data apps, but both for Canvas and model driven right here. You also have the training um, app for Canvas, which I really love. I, I, I think it's great that that's there because I know a lot of people may not have seen it yet but it's an app that trains you on how to do some of the popular connectors. It's really nice, right? Then if you click all templates, you'll actually be able to go into all the templates. And when you do that, you'll see the clear, the clarity between what's a Canvas app and what's a model-driven app template. So it'll clearly state that there. Let me just kind of control plus sign and zoom in, or I can use my, um, Let's go back. I made a mistake and clicked away. All templates. And then you'll see that if I zoom in close enough, I think you are right now, you can see that the tag for Canvas and Model Driven. So you can get both templates on the same page. And if you're on your home page, you can get all your apps as well. Um, and so kind of helpful, kind of brings everything together. Here's all your apps. Now you can also see your shared with me apps, right? So your recent apps and apps that are shared with you. And if you click on all apps, this will take you to the apps page where you can see all your apps. Now, what's really nice is we now have the type column here on the right that tells you, oh, it's Canvas, right? Now I'm only building Canvas right here. So you can see all the Canvas apps, but um, you might be building model driven as well. And they might be in this environment and you can see them there as well. So it depends on the environment. Of course, if you're using the most recent version of CDS, you're not in your default environment, most likely. All right, so the cool thing about this page is, let me just zoom in here. I'm gonna zoom in kind of big here. Notice at the top, we have create an app, but guess what happens when I drop this down? Now you choose what kind of app you wanna build. Do you wanna build a canvas, -driven, a canvas app or a model driven app? And so you can do that right here at the top of your screen, okay? Really easy. You can also do any imports if you're migrating an app from one environment to another or from one tenant to another. And you can get to your Dynamics 365 homepage where you'll find all the apps that are relevant in your world and you'll be able to add apps from the app store soon as well. So really cool. We're trying to get that nice, friendly um, Office 365 Office experience that you've seen elsewhere. Now, but wait, there's more. If I click on create here, you now have a dedicated um, page just for creating. And this is going to have all of your templates, like make apps like these, right? If I click on office, this will uh, narrow me down to our office graph templates, which definitely are our most popular templates. But if you click on all, you'll see all of them. But notice if I kind of get a little bit closer here again, underneath the template name, it lets you know whether it's a Canvas app or a model-driven app. And you can tell that not only by the words, but you can also tell by the symbol. The little paintbrush is Canvas and the little kind of puzzle piece, right? Because model-driven is componentized. The little puzzle piece is model-driven. So I think this is really cool. Um, I love the way uh, we're trying to bring things together for you so that you don't have to remember, you know, how to go where for this and things will be a lot easier as we close the seam um, in your Power Apps experience and so that you can do all that you need to do with your business apps in a single UI. So I hope you like this, but now I have something else to share with you in relation to the Friday Function series. So one of the things that, that happens to me as a app maker is I have this habit of saving functions that I like, right? And um, I put them in OneNote and sometimes they're in collections and collections are in folders that are in text files. So it's interesting how I kind of save these things and it gets, it gets interesting trying to plan, how do you save your repository 
of favorite functions. But this is very different from like going to powerapps.com and getting your um, function reference, right? So as you know, if you go to powerapps.com and you go to documentation and go to, you can go to create apps or you can just quickly search for uh, formula reference, right? then you'll see that there is a formula reference that references all the formulas, right? So let's see, uh, if I go here and then right here in this left bar is the formula reference, right? And it has A to Z, all of the formulas, right? But when I'm working in Power Apps, for the most part, I'm not doing one formula. It's usually nested formulas that kind of work together as a team and I get favorites that I use all the time, you know? And so how do I store these favorites? So I have a mechanical keyboard and a gaming mouse, right? And so I said to myself, self, these mechanical key keyboard and the gaming mouse, they both have macro buttons, which means you can take those buttons that are free and assign macros to them or, or other things to them. And depending on what device you're using, you can even add script. You can even run JavaScript from a button on a gaming keyboard, a gaming mouse, or a mechanical keyboard. So I said, I can use this in Power Apps to store the functions that I forget the most, right? And so, because I had like between the keyboard and the mouse, at least 20 free keys. That sounds about the, I mean, I use about an average of, I don't know, seven or eight functions over and over and over and over and over again. So this was perfect. So let me show you what I did. I have the Logitech um, G602 or 602, either way you want to say that. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty old gaming mouse, but it's a oldie, but a goodie, goodie. It has a lot of functionality. It's um, really comfortable in your hand. And more important than that for this video, it has the way to program your buttons. So you can you can change all the buttons, right? So I ha you can set a keystroke to a button. You can set a multi-key macro to your button. You can set a mouse function. You can set a, a play button or something to do with media. You can set up hotkeys. You can set up HTML shortcuts. You can set up functions. You oh my God. I mean, what you can do in this is like almost endless. And I really love it because I can do a whole bunch of things. And so I'm still figuring out if I can get power ups to show up as a game because it scans your computer for all the games and then it lets you set up macros for your games, of course, right? But power ups didn't come up by default as a game, I guess because it's not a game. And so I'm using the text block. Now, the key to using text block is really two simple things. One, take your favorite function. Like here I have a function that's for building a menu, right? But you, when you normally build a function, you put line breaks between it and you make it look pretty and all that. Don't. Make one single line of your formula, one single line, no matter how long it is, make it one single line, take out any extra spaces and, and prepare it that way. If you're using Notepad, just make sure that word wrap is off under the format menu and then you can clearly see if there's any line breaks or anything. After you got that formula in there, then copy it and paste it into the text block for the keystroke you want to use. So this, um, so let me just go get the menu, right? That's the second one here, happens to be the menu. So if I go cancel here, edit command, and here I am in my menu. And this, I just pasted it just like you saw me right now. I just copied it from the long line and pasted it here. Now this is auto wrapping, but there are no lines in here, no line breaks and no spaces. And then the other thing you have to remember is that these gaming mice are super fast. Like, and that's an understatement. So because they're so fast in their execution, you need to put some delays between the keystroke because the mouse is actually typing each keystroke not pasting the block of text, all right? And since it's typing each keystroke, we don't want it to go too fast for the browser. So I set it to have 30 milliseconds of delay between each character, okay? So now I have a text block associated to my second mouse button. 
And so now I'm back in my Power App, and now I want to use what I stored on my mouse. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to go to screen two because it's an empty screen. And then I'm going to paste in here. I'm not going to paste in there. I'm going to click the button on my mouse because I don't need to go copy and paste. And I believe it's the second button. So I'm going to click the second button on my mouse. And it's going to start typing. You can see it typing the, the, the thing that's in the mouse that's been saved. And this is what's important. Remember to set a delay because it's literally typing each character, right? And we want it to be able to catch up. Now, you're probably thinking, yeah, but Audrey, now it's one line and that's not pretty and I don't like it. Don't forget what we did for you a couple of months ago. We added a new function called format text right here to make pretty formatting. So look, all I got to do is press format text. And look, it's all the, exactly the way you need it to be to follow the best practices of formatting, right? And so now that I have that function in there, now I can insert like maybe a gallery on this page. And then because I put that in the on visible, I'm going to bounce to the home screen and come back. And then you'll see that um, the collection now exists. And so I'm going to go in here and do my menu collection name as the item. And bam, there's my menu. So it's like I use this over and over and over again. And of course, in, in when, you're, when you're adding things like this to your formula bar, whether you're using your mechanical keyboard or you're using your um, gaming mouse, remember that you need to have those data dependencies, right? So if there's a connection to data, you'll, you'll need to replace your data. If there is icons, like in this case, you'll need to make sure your icons are in the app. Otherwise, you're going to get errors. But I'm okay, even if I get errors. You know why? Because I don't have to remember the syntax and the order that I typed everything. I basically can just replace these words with the new icons or the new screen names, and off I go running. So here's, I'm going to give you a challenge. Go ahead and try doing this. Let's say, I'm going to show you my Twitter. So with Twitter, you want to do a um, unconnected check. You know, this was one of the things we, we taught you a while back how to set up offline. And I wanted to set up an offline scenario so that when um, when uh, I'm online, it will go and get the tweets, the last 100 tweets from from um, Twitter. So I'm going to put that in the invisible property. Uh, property. If we go back to my gaming, you can see that I have the offline setting as that third button there. So I'm just going to tap that third button on my mouse. And off goes all of the offline settings and my Twitter settings to get this. And maybe I use this in multiple apps. Maybe I'm often putting in apps that are, that are connecting to social media. Now I just have to change my hashtag and I'm, I'm good to go, right? And I just did that right from my mouse. And again, I can format text. And so I've created a collection called Local Tweets. So I'm just going to insert a gallery on this page. Move this out of the way set that gallery to local tweets. And then the other thing I'm going to do is kind of bounce off of this page, come back. And these are the tweets, right? And so, um, of course, I'm going to tell you soon how you can put this in your, you know, how you can make this happen in your, um, and, and even have the gallery pre-formatted. I'll talk to you about that maybe next week. So I'm going to do the image and title. And then for the image, I'm just going to use the uh, user's, I guess the user's, um, uh, what do you call it? I'm sorry. This item dot <laughs> tweeted by, tweeted by user mentioned user details. And then from user details, I can get the user's image. So profile image URL. And then I can change this guy to the body so I can read the tweet. This item, tweet, tweet text, let's see, tweet text. And then I'll just make it auto height over here on the right. Um, some of these are pretty long, huh? So let me make my template bigger. Now I could have also used a 
uh, variable height gallery to adjust this automatically in tweets for power apps. And so it's kind of like fun. I didn't have to like figure out where to store these things that I use a lot. I can just go and, um, and pull them out of my mouse or my keyboard and check out the new homepage. And if you are a gamer and you have a mechanical keyboard with some macro keys, or you have a gaming mouse with some macro keys, go hook them up to your functions, right? So that you have a handy repository right in your devices as you work. I think it's a lot of fun, totally optional, totally not for everybody, but I enjoyed this. So I hope you have an awesome weekend and I hope this was useful to you. Happy power apping.